Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 328. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to uh, uh, answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google Plus for commercial uh, users and also the Dumb uh, SEO Questions Facebook group. With us today, we have um, Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he resides uh, in the United Kingdom uh, in the uh, suburb of Wimbledon. Micah Fisher Kirshner is based on the west coast of the USA uh, uh, near Silicon Valley. He's the um, convener of a large uh, um, SEO group and uh, uh, he's also head of SEO for Turn River Capital uh, in the United States. David Rosam is a leading internet marketer based in West Sussex uh, in the UK. Um, you can find David at um, writingforseo.org and davidrosam.com and Tim Capo. Oh, I forgot to mention Masataki Wasa is a um, Google product expert for uh, the AdSense uh, community. And Tim Kapper is uh, a Google product expert for the uh, um, Google My Business community. Tim is uh, also CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. He's also based in the UK at Corby, about 100 miles uh, north of London. All right, we have, um, I think, six or seven questions uh, tonight. And um, our first uh, question is um, called, titled uh, Shutting Down a Google My Business Account. And it's from Lauren Baker. Uh, Lauren asks, has anyone shut down a Google My Business account for a non-storefront business that had... Uh, Google My Business set up. Um, about to do so with a company and set it to non-existent. My fear is that it may say permanently closed afterwards. Thanks. So, so there's two things. Well, there's a couple of things here, and it's not as direct as as that uh, may sound. So. Um, when you yeah okay so setting it to non-existent um and this also applies to even if it was in your actual if it was claimed and verified if the business is uh well known searched for quite often or has um reviews in the in the business page then um, it might not be removed. Um, and this is the thing. So if you, if, if, you, if you had a claim and you deleted the page and it was quite well known, quite visited, had removed, it would um, not actually be removed. You would only be removing your ownership. Um, on the flip side, it doesn't sound like you have this and you just want to try and remove it by say this is non-existent. If it has reviews and they feel that this is actually, even though it may just be an online, um, the uh, a review, this is done algorithmically and the algo might just say, well, this is actually clicked on quite a few times. People view it, people look at it, and therefore they're not going to action it. They wouldn't put permanently closed on it because this is an algo. It would just go, um, it, it would just uh, ignore your your action. Um, your second thing that you could do then, um, so there's a couple of things you can do, is you can, and I think I did provide you with a, uh, a link to reporting a business, uh, report it and just you know clearly state this is a online only. This is an online only. Uh, storefront this should never have been created or it doesn't you know uh, visitors can't actually visit it it's online only you've got a full little section there on what to describe 
um, or why it shouldn't be existing. And I think this should be your best bet for it to be removed, um, especially if it had reviews on it and it was, you know, it had it was clicked on quite often. So use that first to report it, um, that it should be removed. Yes, it is technically a spam report that I've given you, but that won't affect uh, any organic in any way, shape or form or the business. Um, it's literally, you know, to remove uh, these entities. Um, so try that. I think that's your best, your, your, your best path to go down to have it actually physically removed. Excellent answer, Tim. Thank you very much. I don't, well, if anyone wants to add anything, fine, but I, I otherwise I'll move on to the next. Okay, number two on our run list is from Hazel Quimpo. It's titled a Static Page or Weekly Blog Post. Hazel said, I run an event directory site. Each week, I create a post of the top events to attend that weekend. Is it better to, one, have a static page where I change the content weekly, or two, uh, have a new blog post each week? Um, so I think I might have also replied to this one. You did. Uh, yeah. Um, so, so look, in my mind, um, you, you're not going to be creating any duplicate stuff because uh, I'm assuming it would say events in events in London, March. Yeah, well, well, this is weekly. So events in Lo London, March, uh, the 1st to the, the 7th. Events in London, March, 1st to the 8th. Okay. And, and I'm assuming what's on there is completely different, and I'm assuming it's going to be completely different, or some might roll over, but it's essentially non-kind of, it's not going to fit into a duplicate. However, it kind of will in the sense that, you know, because this is published on a week, on, on what's happening weekly, the week before, um, it may, you know, it probably gets indexed quite quickly because it's a regular post. Um, However, it may not be showing up in time, really, uh, especially where it should be for users searching that. So I think this should be, um, I think this should be a static uh, page on site, you know, because typically people are going to want to look on what's going on in the area uh, that coming week or month. Um, I would probably say monthly is going to be better. Um, rather than weekly because for the same simple fact that google still needs to find this they need to index it uh, uh you know very quickly and unless you are a super well visited site that's not going to be you know it's it's not going to be happening um or appearing in search as you intended to be on such a quick turnaround every seven days um so what I would probably do is one, this should be probably static on your site. Um, and you can even with good programming update this, uh, you know, without you even having to, to, to even go in and update it. You know, this thing could just be pulled through, uh, as things are uploaded. And that's why I said, probably you want to look at maybe mo uh, on a monthly basis to start with. And as soon as, you know, this starts becoming a regular thing. Google understands it. You could then break it down into, you know, uh, fortnightly and then weekly. But I think initially what you want to be looking at is on a monthly thing. It can be programmed anyway, um, and it could be updated uh, almost automatically as people add their uh, add their events in, you know, um, and it, it would be on page static. It would be, you know, uh, either in your to in in your top line, so that people can quickly check. They can check an area and what's going on that month, and then I'm assuming they can look drill down by, you know, following months and weeks and things like that. And they should be static pages and and, and indexable. Um, to, I, I think that's probably your best bet to be on your main site rather than a weekly post. Um, 
because I don't think a weekly post is really going to work in that sense. The other thing is if you were doing a weekly post, I would just be using the same the same the, the same URL and just updating that. You know, if you wanted to keep doing the weekly post, I would just use the same page and update it and don't have the date actually in your thing. So it would be what's happening, like your your URL would be uh, events in London this week. Uh, and that would be your same URL and you would literally just change the content and that URL. But then you're gonna get to the same problem of Google won't be, you know, they may or may not, but even if they did, you've literally got a seven day turnaround on the stuff. Um, and I really don't think the intended thing on that um, is, is gonna happen. Uh, unless you're super, you know, like maybe Eventbrite or something like that. But like I said, you know, look at that, look how some of the top guys do it. You know, they have these static pages and they do update those static pages rather than having a blog page. Yeah, so I'm in agreement with Tim on this static page. Um, on top of that, if, if anything, just the fact that kind of on a week-to-week -week cadence, even if you made it like a, a weekly thing, those posts are going to, uh, every week, Kind of the shift, what number it is, um, which weekend it is, the dates for that will change. So I actually would might maybe even look at it as a as a status page on a monthly basis um, to collect all that uh, for the month that you can then individually update every year, uh, collecting all the value that if people are linking to those pages, then you're building it up over time rather than having to restart from scratch every single time every year. So that's the other thing I would just kind of note with this. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Micah. Anybody else? All right, let's go to the next. Josh Michael asked the question titled, Starting a Link Building Campaign. Josh said, hi, everyone. I was hoping to get some advice. I started working at my friend's company in the sign writing slash printing niche around the beginning of October last year. One of my roles uh, has been to work on the website and SEO uh, to improve uh, search visibility. I'm now trying to post content regularly through Facebook and Google My Business and have been reaching out to customers to get reviews on Facebook and Google. I would now like to start a link building campaign, but I don't have much experience in this area. Can anyone recommend what types of links I should be acquiring and the best places to get them? I've taken a look at what Fiverr has to offer, but not sure if this is considered black hat and if I am risking a manual penalty. So first things first, Please don't go to Fiverr, okay? <coughs> Second thing is, if you're not entirely comfortable or sure of how to work, start working on a link building campaign, I think your best bet, one for the site, two for you, would be to actually produce content on your own site and use that as a link building mechanism, okay? Um, and the best way there, I think for you starting off would be, you know, this is a signage thing. Start actually capturing customers during the research and purchasing funnel uh, for signage. So um, start actually targeting them in search before they've even made a decision. So start, you know, create, you know, create an entire list of um, questions customers ask. You know, the basic ones can go into FAQs. The, the more detailed ones can go into their own actual, um, you know, uh, articles on site. Um, difference between signage and, uh, I don't know, laminated signage and screen printed signage uh, is how do I measure or how do I create my artwork for, you know, the sizes required for screen printing, um, all different, you know, literally every single kind of thing relating to, to the business. 
Um, and by that, you're going to be appearing in search for those specific search queries, capturing customers during during their research phase. Um, uh, and then, you know, when you're increasing, you know, your organic traffic, it's, you know, um, you're going to be increasing your authority at the same time by creating really in-depth articles, you know, hopefully at the same time, people are going to find this a valuable resource. And this is the idea of link building is essentially, and they will start linking to you. Um, but I would really go down that road for you as, as a more holistic approach, because one, it benefits your site. Two, you're looking at, uh, you know, increased, increased, you know, uh, visits over time. Um, you're capturing them in the funnel uh, process. Depending on how well you do it, um, people are going to start linking to you anyway. And I would really go down that road rather than starting to go down the the path and um, maybe doing something incorrectly with link building. You, I don't know, inadvertently end up adding something to a PBN. Google knows it's a PBN and, you know, you inadvertently end up hurting your site. Um, so I would probably st concentrate on, target, on actually working on your site. And creating the content that one attracts a user to, um, you know, to will hopefully be linked to if, if it's great enough. But, you know, the, the, this really boils down to you sitting down with, you know, the company, the business, and literally finding, you know, knowing exactly what they do and create and, 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 and targeting these queries. You know, if you can, at the end of the day, in a year's time, say I've literally covered every potential question and search query regarding um, regarding signage, you know, you, you're laughing all the way to the bank. Thank you, Tim. Also, I'd like to point out that the people who answer questions on our dumb SEO questions uh, Facebook group, uh, People like Rishi Lakani, uh, Brenda Michelin, and Michael Martinez. Um, the assistance uh, we get um, through the week is invaluable, and for that we are grateful. Okay, A anybody else on this before we move on? Okay, from Dave Elliott. Uh, it's titled The Cheapest Backlink tracking program he said what's the best very cheap rank and, and backlink tracking program at the moment his mate has a small business and a smaller budget oh we're losing micah fisher kirshner uh, micah is heading off thank you mate thank you sir Cheers, Michael. Oh, yeah, you know, oh. Jay Alfavario, I see uh, in the uh comments has uh, mentioned SEO Quake, um, which is available as, as a Chrome extension. Um, SEMrush, of course. Yeah, it said uh, very cheap. <laughs> yeah, true enough. Mm. What uh, is SEMrush um, on a monthly basis now? Yeah, but even for yeah, but there would just be a small thing, single thing. Let's have a look. Um, I think it's still quite, it's it's kind of they've priced themselves sort of into the premium range. Um, it's ninety nine bucks a month. That's still quite expensive for a small thing starting off. Um, Hmm. I actually don't have any answers. I've, I haven't. 
Chip, I'm out of this one. <laughs> I, I haven't been, been shopping for such things. Um, for donkeys. Um, you know, Chrome, Chrome extensions are, are likely to be are likely to be cheap, like free. Um, but they're not going to give you the uh, the data that uh, a paid for um, subscription is is going to. Um, the um, the link uh, link tracking or link uh, link counting. Um, the it, it's the it's the ongoing implication here. You know, tracking. You want to get a report every every week, every month. Um, that that's going to get you into paying territory. Um, you'll be able to check um, uh, check links on a on a day to day basis, uh, just as sampling it with, with something like SEO Quake. Um, this is not answering your question, I'm, I'm afraid, Dave. Uh, I think it's um, I think it's getting onto Google. I'm afraid. Um, and see what see what there is out there. Um, but traditionally, uh, rank checking uh, programs have not been uh, or uh, rank checking. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, when I first started that. Uh, quite a while ago there um there were very few of these products around and literally it was you know on a couple of small sites i mean it literally was basically using like incog and physically searching it and if you're only looking at a handful of things you know mm, you could literally just do it and i mean let's face it most most small businesses are like checking their stuff on a daily basis um yeah yeah it'd be nice if webmaster tools had a kind of an extension that gave and you could you know you could look at the positions although they're not exactly accurate um it'd be nice if webmaster tools did a little thing like that but could you trust them? Ah, oh, but you can just physically go in and type it in, you know. I mean, if you're a small business, let's face it, I don't know, 20 search terms a minute each, you know, that's 20 minutes at the end of the week to find out what, you know, where you've done. And do you really need to check it weekly? And there is the old argument, do you really want to check positions? Mm. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, I keep an eye on them just because it's obviously so much and it's in the dashboard. Yeah. And it's a good indication of if something crazy is going on, especially when there's like an update, like a core update. Yeah. You know, you can literally see something's freaking disappear overnight and then come back the following week. Um, but could you action anything on it? That's the thing, you know, sometimes it's quite dangerous, isn't it? Like for small business doesn't like that, they, 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 they see these things drop. Then they go and freak out, make all sorts of weird decisions on site. Um, and if they just left it in a week, it would have come back. But now they've gone and made some crazy ass decisions and mm, they're quite dangerous actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always a fiver link building program. Uh, uh, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> No, I, 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 I didn't say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave Elliott, I'm sorry. That, that's as good as we've got, and uh, that's your lot for tonight. I'm sorry, mate. Um, yeah, Dave sorry, Elliott, Dave. Da Dave is another person, another stalwart, who looks after uh, people through the week on our Dumb SEA Questions Facebook group.
Zawa Kamal has a question for us. It's number five on our run list. It's titled Getting Crawled Again Faster. But he said, I just changed the link structure of blog posts and made all of the redirects. What's the best way to get them crawled again a bit faster than usual? Um, well, you can only do 10 fetch and renders a day, can't you, in Search Console? Um, so you've, got, you've, you've updated 200 poetry. Well, well, in theory, so here, 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 here's another thing for you, uh, Zawa. You said you worked on the internal link structure. Well, just do the main the, the one. Oh, just do a fetch and render on like the main ones in each kind of category because if you've worked on your internal link structure once they found one they'll be using the internal links to follow through to the next the next the next so in theory you've been working on a silo effect and just by submitting the top line you know the, the bottom the bottom of the silo should re uh, should in theory <laughs> do the rest and then you'll know for sure, how well your internal linking was. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, does the site have a Google business page? For your internal linking structure will also help with that moving through. Um, so there's a couple of ways, but there's no like one, one way just to, you know, um, working your way through it. Uh, yeah. Okay, any more for that? Okay, let's go to the next. It's either the, the last or uh, almost last question. Ahmad Ibrahim uh, asked a question titled Crawled but currently not indexed. Uh, Ahmed said, hey, guys, I have a coverage issue in my Google Search Console. My Google Search Console coverage section says that seven pages in my website are crawled, currently not indexed. That happened four days ago, but before that, everything was fine. All of my website's 16 URLs were valid. What could cause that and what should I do to solve this issue? Um, please note that the um, website is new. It's um, been live since March the 11th and has no backlinks pointing to those dropped from the index pages or to the valid ones. Is it the, uh, a problem following on from Google's, uh, shall we say, bug the other week? Um, well, hang on. He, he's saying he's saying that it actually appears in search. So he's saying it appears in search. He can see it. It appears in the top in the SERPs. But, of course, Google Search Consoles is saying it doesn't. So this, oh, you know, yes. Well, it has to be a search console bug then. I mean, that's quite clear. Um, absolutely clear. If it's in the SERP, you can click on that, go through. Um, it's certainly been crawled. It's certainly been indexed because the proof is right there in the search result. If search console is saying it's not, well, then firstly, I would double check your uh, what domain? Uh, well, I mean, if it was before, I want to know. Have you actually added the correct domain in Search Console? Just double check those little things, tick them off the list. Is it the correct domain? Like, I don't know, have you added a dub 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 in there and it's not the dub dub dub? And, you know, or is it the HTTP and now you're on HTTPS? So double check that in Search Console, the exact domain. 
Um, and if not, I would probably say this is the just a bug. Okay, Ahmed Ibrahim, uh, it uh, uh, looks like that's all we have for you tonight. Um, if it's not enough, uh, please ask this question again or ask it in a different way or ask for more information. All right, uh, I think when I click this button, yes, it's thank you for watching time. It means that uh, we've answered all of the questions asked on the SEO questions community on Google+. Plus and uh, or at least on um I, you know, I suppose it is still google plus isn't it for uh, commercial users and uh, also the dumb seo questions facebook group i think uh, masataki wasa um micah fisher kirshner david rosam and tim kappa for their valuable contributions um we'll be back uh at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, and we thank you for your participation. Uh, your interest in what we do makes what we do worthwhile. Um, we'll do this uh, again next week, but for now it's um, good night.